Hey everyone, I'm Cody and welcome to a video where I'm going to show you how to build a JS or JavaScript Connect 4 game using jQuery, JavaScript, HTML5, CSS, whatnot. And um, let's go ahead and just get started, right? So obviously you know what Connect 4 is or you should. So if you don't, I'll go to Connect 4, go to Images. You know, Connect 4 is this game where you have this grid and each player can alternate taking turns placing their color circle. Um, so we're going to try to build that, which basically whenever you get four in a row, you win the game. So that's kind of a reference that we can go off of. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So on the left, I have an empty project over here, which has absolutely no files in it. It's just a blank Git repo. And on the right, I have that project hosted using HTTP hyphen server, which is a node module you, you can use if you want to host um, like HTML files or whatnot. That's kind of my setup. So to start off, how would you build a website or a web page which displays a grid that has this type of uh, structure in it? Like here is a good example I guess we can go off of. So to start off, we need to first build up a blank HTML file. So if I go over here and just say new file index.html, so here we can actually write our HTML file if we want to and say build an HTML, we need a head, and we need a body. And inside the head, I'll just go ahead and give a title and call it connect four. And also inside here, we can start including some things. So the first thing I'm going to do is include a style sheet. I'm going to say there's a local style sheet hosted in this folder, which we can add in one second. Now call it style.css. Go ahead and make this font a little bit smaller so we can see it. So this page is going to load in style.css, which we haven't created yet. So I'll go ahead and just create a style.css. And I'm also going to create a main.js file. So inside our index, we can just go ahead and import that as well. So up here, I'm going to go to add a new element called script. I'm going to first include main.js. Down here, I can just do something simpler like Hello world, just to make sure that this is working. And then if I were to refresh the page, we have hello world printing out. And inside the console, my dev tools, if I were to go to the console over here, I wanted to make sure that this main.js thing is loading and running correctly. I can go over to my main.js file and say console.log here. Save that file and refresh this page and we get here printed out. All right, so we have our basic setup going. And again, we can just test to make sure that the body is working. So I can say background color is orange, save that. And it is refreshing the screen using live reload on the background. So if you remember, I did mention that we're gonna be using jQuery and I'm mainly using jQuery because it has a lot of helper functions, which allow us to do our job uh, much more efficiently than using vanilla JavaScript. Might be kind of overkill, but I like to use it just because it's really easy to select stuff and change data on stuff and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and go to CDNJS and search for jQuery and I'll go ahead and grab the jQuery min.js, copy this. And then over here I can just, first of all, close my editor. I can load that script in here. And to verify that it is working, I can say document ready. It's going to go ahead and print out working. If that is in if that is indeed working. All right, so it says money sign is not defined. That's because I loaded jQuery after main. So of course you need to load it before you run your script. And now we get working printed out to the console. So now we have jQuery working, we have our style sheets hooked up, and we have our main JS file running as expected. So to start off, what we want to do is we want go ahead and Get rid of that body background color is we want to first figure out a way to dynamically build up a grid so inside our body if we were to just go ahead and make a div and call it connect for or something we want to populate that connect for div with some rows and columns that kind of show a grid that looks like this so if you notice you have one two three four five six seven columns and six rows. 
So what we can do in our main JS file is I'm going to go ahead and just clear out those console logs and just do a little to-do here. So I said to do, draw a grid. And they kind of help abstract this into different modules. What I'm going to do, first of all, is make a connect for file and also include that right above main. And what we're going to do inside connect for, so I include connect for as a script. And I have connect for over here. Basically, what connect for is going to do is declare a class called connect for, which we can use in our main file. So I'm going to go ahead and just type this out. I'll make a class called connect4. I'll give it a constructor. I'll say this dot rows is equal to six and this dot columns is equal to seven. And over here on main, I could just say make us a new grid or a new connect4 object. So up here I can say const connect four is equal to new connect four and I'm going to go ahead and pass it some type of selector. So I'm just going to do a string and you know, this is up to us. This is, we can customize it however we want to, but our constructor is going to take a selector. So over here, I'm going to pass in selector that it knows where to render the grid. If you remember on our HTML file, we have an ID called connect four. So what we want to do is inside main.js, we're going to pass that element or that ID of connect four into this new connect four object. And what we want our connect for class to do is just go ahead and build up a grid. So to kind of just show you what exactly is going on and kind of jumping around. First thing I'm going to do is just to demonstrate, I can say um, grid is equal to use jQuery and grab that selector. And then I can say grid.html is equal to hello. So now when I save this, notice that what it's doing is main is running. It's creating this connect for object passing the selector, and then the connect for class is grabbing the selector, grabbing the div, and then adding HTML to the um, inside of that div. All right, so that's pretty awesome. So what we want to do at this point, again, is we're trying to build that six by seven grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a method on this connect for class called create grid. And the purpose of this function is to basically build up a bunch of divs, like you know, six different rows, inside each row we have seven different columns and we're going to go ahead and call dot this dot create grid here so whenever this connect for object initializes we're going to go ahead and create the html for the grid and i'm going to go ahead and just get rid of these things um and keep track of that selector that was passed in so to start off how would we create a grid so the first thing i want to do is i want to grab that DOM element. So I can say const board is equal to jQuery of this dot selector. And that should give us, if I were to print this out, that should give us the div of connect4. And inside of this connect4 div, we want to go ahead and just loop over and create six rows. So one way you could do that is obviously use a for loop. So set let row is equal to zero. And I'll say row is less than this dot rows and row plus plus. And I'll do the same thing with the columns here. So instead of let row, I'll say let column. In fact, I'll take a step back so I don't kind of confuse you all yet. So let's just start with the row. So for each row, what we're going to do is create a new div. So I'll say const row. And the way I kind of use this money sign in front of variable names, it's just so I know that it's a jQuery object. Um, this is just my convention. You don't have to follow this, but it just easily um, lets me know that, hey, this is a jQuery object that we're messing with. So we're saying const money sign row is equal to, and I'm going to create a new div using jQuery. And to do that, you just do money sign and pass it the name of the DOM element you want to create. In this case, it's div. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a class to it called row. And then, of course, I can say board.append row. And now, if I were to print out the board after here, we see that the board has, actually, let me print out the HTML of the board. The board now has a bunch of rows nested inside of it. And in course, I can go here 
just kind of demonstrate that we have a div called ID Connect 4. And inside that, we're creating six rows. So six divs with the class row inside here. So that's step one, right? We need to create six rows. And the second step is we need to create seven columns inside of each of those rows. So instead, I can add another for loop here. And again, the one I put out a second ago, I'm just going to loop over the columns now. And for every iteration of this for loop, I'm going to say const call is equal to, and then I'll just go ahead and create another div. This one's going to have a class of call and empty, just so we can kind of style it and you know give it a style of when it is empty versus when it has a red or a black token inside of it. And I think that should be good for there. And then I need to append that column. So if I say money sign row dot append, and then append the column onto the row. And then for each row, we append into the board. If I were to save this now and go into the body, we have a div called connect four. It has six rows. And each side, each row, it has seven columns. So the DOM element structure is there, ready to go, but we still don't really visualize it. So what we can do at this point is we can dive into the style.css. And the first thing I want to do is just add a couple of attributes to, first of all, the connect for object, which is our grid. And we want to set the background color to yellow. And we want to make it display in line block. For the body, I'm just going to go text the line center so that the grid is centered. So again, this made everything centered. And this made the grid with the background color of yellow, which we can't see right now because it has no height. Um, but we will visualize that in one second. So for every column that we have on the page, we want to give it a particular width in height. So I'll say width is equal to 70 pixels. I'll do height is equal to 70 pixels. Save that. And then, so you saw here, it kind of created all those, but they're all on one like column, which is not what we want. So we can just go ahead and do a display inline block on the columns, and that makes them all appear on the same row. Um, over to hover over them, you see that we have these columns side by side. And that's because we added display in link block on line 13. So almost done with this. First, let's set the background color to white. And I'm going to add a border radius of 50% to make it round. And finally, we could probably add some margin over all the slots just so it looks more like a grid. Awesome. So that wasn't too difficult. Let me just do a really quick recap so we're not really confused as to what just happened. So inside this connect for class, we call create grid when the constructor is called. And inside this constructor, we basically loop over every row and create a div called row, which you can see here. And then inside of every row, we just append seven different columns. And then we went ahead and just add a bunch of different styles so it makes it look more like a Connect4 grid. So not, not too difficult, right? And jQuery allows us to do this type of logic much more simple than just using vanilla JS where you have to do like dot query selector. And then if you want to add a class or remove a class, you'd have to do a bunch of other, um, in my opinion, just like hacky ways to do it versus jQuery just gives you really useful utility functions to do the same thing. Let me just go ahead and minimize this a little bit. So we have a grid again. And what we can do at this point, the next thing we're trying to achieve. And in fact, before I go too much further, let me just go ahead and commit what I have. So I'll say added the grid or initial setup of grid. Add that. Go ahead and commit that or push that, I mean. And again, as we work through this project, I'm going to be committing and pushing stuff to our repo. So if you were to go here and you wanted to actually kind of walk through how we did this stuff, you could just look through all the different commits here. And then first one I did initial setup of grid, which has all of these different changes. And of course, I'll add a readme in a little bit so you can actually run this. Um, just do a readme MD really quick. And we'll come back to that at the very end and I'll, I'll explain how you can run this easily on your computer. 
Alrighty, so now for the next step, what we want to do is as you hover over the, the cells in this grid, we want to go ahead and just drop different colors. So the easiest way to do that, or at least the way I'm going to do it in this tutorial, is I'm going to create another function inside this class, which is going to set up event listeners. And again, there's more than one way to put this up. So if you find a better way to do this, or if you think of a more elegant solution, feel free to do it and give me feedback. But this is just the way that I feel is a decent solution to this project. So the first thing we want to do is call setup event listeners here. So basically when we create the grid, we're going to create a bunch of event listeners, which are going to listen to different things such as hover events, click events, or whatnot. Um, so the first thing I think would be useful is we want to kind of, when we, we enter one of these columns or cells, we want to place an indicator as to where the piece is going to drop. Because again, if you have like three pieces here already and you're hovering over this column, it should drop it at this location. So the first thing, let's just go ahead and do um, const board is equal to this dot selector. And again, I'm just grabbing that DOM element called um, connect4, or ID of connect4, and we're going to do a different listeners on that. So I can say the first one is board dot on mouse enter. And then this is a <clears throat> jQuery method where you pass it the event you want to listen to. The second argument is going to be the selector that you're going to listen to as well. So I'm going to say whenever we click on or hover over, sorry, an empty column, let's invoke a function. Make this font a little bit smaller so we can see everything on one page. In fact, I could probably just a little bit because we're not going to be using more than that grid. Okay, so basically, when we enter one of these cells, so I'll say here, print out the cell that we've entered. Go ahead and go to the console now. As we hover over these cells, notice that it's printing out the different cells that we've hovered over. That's kind of how you'd add event listeners using jQuery on different DOM elements. And again, these are set up when the constructor is ran for connect4. So basically, the moment we call new connect4 and pass it that selector, it's going to set up those event listeners. Okay, so again, what we're trying to do is when you hover over one of these pieces, it's going to put an indicator at the bottom. So how do we do that? The first thing I think you need to know is how do we know which column or row that we've hovered over? In this case, we just need to know the column ID, right? So we can't really, you know, do... There's not really a good way to do that, I guess. So what we can do is go back to when we're creating the grid, and we can add different attributes to the column. So here I could say add attribute. Actually, in fact, it's just attr instead of add attribute. It's attr, and I can pass the attribute I want to add. So I can say data call. And then, of course, we want to give it the attribute of column index. And then here for row, which we'll use later on, I'm just going to go ahead and give it the the row index here. So here you have the row index, which will be zero through five. And then here would be the column index, which is zero through six. Now at this point, if I save this and we were to hover over, we see that now every time we hover over a different column, we have a easy way to grab, you know, which index, like zero, zero being the top left. And as we go down, we get to zero five. And as we go to the far bottom right corner, we get to six, five. So again, we use these two attribute methods in jQuery to just go ahead and add an attribute to the cell. And then over here, what we could easily do is just print those out. So if I were to say once the column is equal to money sign this dot data of column, and then print out what column is equal to, and go ahead and save that. Notice that it's going to print out zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, as I hover over things. You might ask, okay, so what was the purpose of that? Why do we, why do we need to get the column index? So again, we need to kind of, when we hover over column, let's say one, we need to grab all of the cells in that column and loop it backwards over them until we find an empty one. And once we do find an empty one, we can just go ahead and 
change the look of that column. So it might not make too much sense. Let me just go ahead and start working on coding it up and we will see what I mean. So what we want to do again is as we hover over one of these cells, we want to get the last empty cell that's in that column. So let's just first assume that we have a method that we can do that. So we get a const last empty cell is equal to find last empty cell and then pass it the column index. And so up here inside setup event listeners, we can just go ahead and declare that function. And assuming that it does return something that we can use, we could just go ahead and add a class to it. So last empty cell dot add class is equal to, I'm just going to do something called next. And I'll say red. <clears throat> and we'll probably change the name of this later in a second. Um, but of course, if we had a style called next red, we could just change the background color to a red value with some opacity. I'll make it a really, really, really faint red if we hover over one of the columns. Rearrange this. Okay, so now we want to implement that find last empty cell method, which we defined up here on line 29. So to do that, Remember, what were we trying to do is we need to grab all of the cells in that column that we selected. So the way to do that using jQuery is we, we can say const cells is equal to, and then using jQuery, say grab me all the columns that have the same attribute data hyphen column. If you remember, we added that earlier on, equal to the column index that we passed in. If I were to print out what cells is at this point, we should get an array of a lot of different elements as we hover over stuff. Um, let's see, add class of, well, right now I'll comment that out because it's not going to work as intended. But now I hovered over something and I go here and we have a, I'm not 100% sure if this is working yet because I forgot to put a, a colon there or a comma there. Okay, there. <laughs> so I added this single quote here and that fixed the bug and basically now when we hover over one of these columns it's going to show us all of the cells that are in that column and so kind of visualizing here what we need to do programmatically is we just need to start at the very end and just keep looping backwards until we find an empty one and it turns out in all these cases these are all empty so we can just grab the last one if it's empty we just add a class or remove a class empty from it and we could just add something else to it so in this one, I'll say loop over all of these things backwards. And then grab the cell that we're currently at. I'll say cells of I. Basically, again, we loop over backwards. We get the jQuery representation of the cell that we're at. And we say if the cell has a class of empty, we want to just go ahead and return that cell. And otherwise, we can just return all. So now this method will just return us the last jQuery instance that has an empty class attached to it. So if I were to go down here and then of course add that new class, notice that as we hover it's going to add kind of a placeholder at the bottom. And of course we need to add a, a mouse leave event to kind of remove that class. So let's go ahead and just work on fixing that bug and it shouldn't be too difficult. Basically, inside the um, setup event listeners, what we can do is add another on callback function. So I'll say on mouse leave. And if this is invoked on any column, we could just say all a function. And then, of course, we can say remove all of the classes that have next red attached to them. Now, as we hover over, notice that it's going to remove the last one that it added. And of course, there's probably other ways to do this, but um, this is a decent way that comes to mind just from coding. So let's go ahead and commit this to the repo because this is a good, um, some good functionality we added. So I'm going to go ahead and say added functionality for hovering over columns. Go ahead and add that. Go ahead and push that. 
and just make sure that it's here now and we have just now we updated some stuff cool. so now if you want to see the functionality changes from setting up the initial grid to seeing these event listeners you can do so by just simply clicking commits here and then viewing the commits to um sorry so now at this point what we can do is if we were to click on one of these columns we just go, we want to go ahead and just place a piece in the bottom row or wherever the next quote unquote slot should be so again we could just add another listener which is going to be money sign board on click and then if we click on an empty cell or an empty dom element that has the class empty what we can do is again, we know what we clicked on, so we can get the column and the row. So I'll say const call is equal to this of data call. And then same thing with row. So we know which column and row was clicked. In fact, I'm not sure if we even need this at this point, but it would be good to know. Um, so remember, yeah, if we were to, let's say an example, if we were hovering over this one here and we click it, we want to place the player's token or the circle at the very last one. So we can call that same method called find last empty cell and pass it the column index, which will give us that last empty cell. And then what we can do is just simply remove the empty from it. So I can say last empty cell, remove class of empty. Remove class empty and then last empty cell I could add a class of red. In fact, I'll get rid of row for now. We don't really even need row. So just to demonstrate what's going on, if I again were to try this out and just click on one of these, we should now have a class of red attached to that, which we do, but we didn't actually declare a style for it. So let's go back here and say all of red is equal to background color of red. So notice here we get a red every time we click. Hmm. Which is pretty awesome. So secondly, let's just go ahead and make a column of black um, because we know we're going to have a red and a black player. And again, uh, I'll do a next black. So at this point, what we want to do is kind of alternate between if I was player um, red or if I was player black. So up here, we can just go ahead and add a, another member to this class and I'll say player is equal to red. So we start off as player red. And then after we drop that cell into um, the grid, we just need to kind of switch around the player. So if I wanted to kind of switch from player red to player black on this member here, we first need access or we need to keep reference to the original object. So a little um, hack, if you're familiar with JavaScript, you typically have to do something like this to retain access to the original this attribute. Um, you may say, okay, well, why don't you just use a fat arrow here? But the issue is I also need access to the event called this and this function. Um, so instead on line 29, I'm just gonna say const that is equal to this. And then down here, I can say that dot player is equal to, and then if player is already equal to red, I'm going to change it to black. Otherwise I'll change it to red. And this is gonna kind of uh, alternate between placing a red piece and a black piece. And of course here we can say that dot player instead of just placing red every single time. And up here, Inside these two functions, instead of placing um, red every time we hover or removing red every time we hover, we could instead just say uh, that dot player as well. So again, to recap, we added a player attribute to the class, which is going to be either the string red or the string black. And then as we enter or leave or click on these different columns, we're going to be using that to remove classes and add classes. So the first thing is if we're player red, 
Actually, one second, there's an issue. So as we hover, we see that we are placing next hyphen black, but I think the color is not what we want. Because 255 is white. We change it to black. So now as we hover over, we have black. Okay. So to start over, first player that goes is red, and when he clicks, it's going to place a red piece, and now when I move over, it's going to be an indicator of a black. When I click, it's going to place a black piece. So I can just go ahead and just keep alternating between these, which is pretty cool. Um, one thing I notice is that when I click, the indicator doesn't show up anymore. And also, there should be a pointer. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go back to column. I'll say column of empty. A pointer or cursor is equal to a pointer. And now when we hover over empty cells, it's going to be a pointer. Um, and the second bug I'm trying to fix is once you click, I want the indicator to show up automatically again for the next player. So to fix that bug, look at the code really quick and try to understand what's going on. And I think basically we all we need to do is just kind of force the event mouse enter to trigger on the piece that we just placed, I believe. So the last empty cell, we obviously need to remove, yeah, we can also remove um, that next, that dot player. And just go ahead and change that to back tick. So we can interpolate the string there and then update player at the very end. And then of course, we need to just invoke that mouse leave or mouse enter function on that column. Like say this dot mouse, or this, this dot trigger, mouse enter. See if that kind of fixes the issue. Okay, which it kind of does. Mm. But one issue is that we're retaining that last piece that we did. Okay, so I spent some time trying to figure out what the issue was, and I think it's because I'm adding um, mouse enter trigger right before we switch the player, and instead we need to do it after. So if I were to do this, okay, I think that's working as is. Cool, so now we have the functionality to alternate between the different players, so red player and black player. And at this point, I think this is a good stopping point to again commit our changes. So I'm going to go ahead and say alternate, alternating between players. Go ahead and add that, and push that to the repo. Cool. So we have a really cool Connect4 grid that we can click and play around with to alternate between red and black. So now the next step is once we place these pieces, how do we know if a player wins when they connect four? Um, so basically, whenever we click a piece right after that, we need to check the grid to see if someone has one or not. So to do so, let's go ahead and just start off with making another function. And that function I'm going to call is check for winner. And inside this function has two parameters or arguments is going to take is the row and the column that you last clicked. So for an example, let's say we were to click on this column here and place that black one at this point. We need to then check if there's a diagonal or a vertical or a horizontal row or line, which allows that last piece, which was black to win. So if I were to click and check in those directions, if that last piece dropped wins, and we know that the game's over. Um, so basically what we can do is inside the click method, before we change the player, we could just do um, a const winner is equal to that dot check for winner. And I'm going to pass in the row and the column. So here I can say row and then I can say column here. And in fact, we could just go ahead and parse these as ints. 
I'm not sure if we need to parse those as int. Um. Yeah, when we click on the cell, we just go ahead and check for winner of row and column. And then down here, we can say if there is a winner, we can just do some stuff. Hmm. And in fact, I'll just do an alert and say game over. Do back tick so we can do a string interpolation. So game over player that dot player has one. And just go ahead and return out of that. Um, and we can also kind of keep track of, well, do something like that later. Okay, so whenever there is a winner, which in this case, this function doesn't return anything. So if this function does return a string or a Boolean or something that's equivalent to true, then it's going to print out this alert. So to implement this function, let's go ahead and go down to check for winner. And what we want to do is we kind of want to check on all the different directions <clears throat> so horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, if there are four in a row. So to kind of start off, I'm just going to write a the first function. So I'll say return check verticals. So that assumes that we have a function called check verticals. So up here, I'll say function check verticals. And what check verticals is going to do is we want to have it return a call to a function called check win. So inside here, I'm just going to pass it um, some directions. So if you remember, we were to, so if we take a step back and just think, let's say we pass in row of two and column of two. If we were to check the verticals, we know that we need to check in the direction up and the direction down. So here for check when, we're just gonna assume that there's a function called check when, and that's gonna have direction A and a direction B. And in this case, for verticals, we can just pass in i of negative 1 and j of 0. And then again, we can check in the down direction, so i of 1 and j of 0 as well. And that's going to kind of pass in a direction, which is going up in this case, and the direction b would be going down in this case. <clears throat> And so at this point, the function check win is what we need to do is kind of sum up all of the tokens or cells that match the current player's color. So up here, I'll say that is equal to this, just so we can keep track of that, just in case we need player. Um, but inside here, we're just going to say keep track of the total, which is going to be equal to 1. Plus, we're going to have another match that called check direction of A. And then we're going to also check the direction of B. And so what we mean by this is, obviously, the piece we just placed down is going to be equivalent to 1. We know that there's already one piece that's red. Now we need to check in the up direction in this case, which is I negative 1. And then we also need to check in the down directions, which is going to be I of 1 and J of 0. And so if the total added up, you know, 1 plus everything above, which is also red, and everything below, which is also red, is equal to 4 or greater. So I can say if total is greater than equal to 4, we know that we can just return the player that we found. So I can say that dot player. And then otherwise, we could just return null because we haven't found an actual player who has 1 yet. Um, so to get the player that is at the cell that we just clicked on. Right now that dot player may not, let's see if that dot player is fine. Check for winner. Yeah, because we don't change the player until after. Mm -hmm. So this is fine. So the next method we need to do is a check direction method. So I'll say direction. And inside the check direction method, what we need to do is basically increment in that direction while we're still inside the grid and check if the color that we just hit also matches the color that we're looking for. So I'm going to say let total is equal to 1. Let's keep track of the number of slots that we found that are the exact same color that we're looking for. So let, let i is equal to, um, that's going to be equal to the row that was passed in plus the direction in the i direction. And then 
let j is equal to the column plus the direction in the j direction. So now this point, if let's say we were checking the direction up, we're just gonna go ahead and add in like one step further and check it. And then we can just go ahead and get the cell. So we don't really have a method to do that. So let's just go ahead and write a function called get cell, ticks in a row and a column. And what we can do is just return using jQuery same row which matches that. So if I were to do this, in fact, I'll do i and I'll do j. So give me the row that is equal to the i, and then give me the column which is equal to j. Now we have a method for getting the jQuery cell. I'll do money sign get cell, and then here I can say let cell is equal to get cell of i and j. So at this point, we've gotten the cell, which is one iteration above the current one that we dropped. So again, if we were to click here, it'll grab us this one above. And what we want to do is just keep on doing this logic while we're still in bounds. So I can say while i is equal to 0, and i is less than 2, that dot rows, and j is greater than or equal to 0. And of course, j is equal to that dot columns, or j is less than that dot columns. And then finally, I can say while the player that we're currently looking at is still equal to the player that we just dropped, we need to keep incrementing and doing this loop again. So I can say total plus plus, the i is plus equal to step of i, same thing with j. And of course, increment next. So next is equal to get cell of i and j. Change that to next and see what happens with that. One thing I'm not sure if we're adding to the actual cell that we dropped is the player. So I'm going to say last empty cell dot data of player is equal to that dot player. But we actually know what you know cell is set to what player. Um, so that was a win in the vertical direction. Let's go ahead and see if this is going to crash when we we're just playing around with it. We're already getting an error, so let me go to the console. I think A is not defined because I did not put direction A and direction B there. Okay. All right, so check direction, step is not defined. Because that should be called direction. Not sure why I did step. Let's try it again. All right, so now we're running into an issue where it's not saying the game is over when it should. Um, so what we can do is a little bit of debugging here and say, obviously the winner is not being set correctly. So let's see, probably because I'm not returning the total here. Again, keep on trying. Cool, so it actually checks in the vertical direction and it says player red has one. And in this case, the game is over, but we can keep on placing crap because we haven't added like a, an ending condition to our game. So let's try to do the same thing with the other directions. So we need to check the horizontals as well. So if I add another function and just call it check horizontals, and this one's going to be static in the row direction, but we're going to go from left to right. I'm just going to go ahead and say call check verticals in or or it with check horizontals so that if any of these return a string, it's just going to go ahead and return the string. Otherwise, it's going to return null. And we know that there's no winner if that's the case. So now by simply adding that method here, we should be able to check wins in the horizontal direction. So if I were to just do the same thing like this. Oops, black has one. All right, so there's a bug where it made player black win even though we only dropped three. Let me refresh the page and 
try to test out the horizontals again. Alright, so there's a bug going on. Let me just double check what's going on. So sometimes when you run into issues like this, it just helps to start running the debugger. So here I'm just going to go ahead and add the debugger here so we can kind of step through our logic and try to figure out what's going on. So every time we place a key, we're going to stop in our debugger and we can kind of walk through what the issue may be. X is a little bit too big, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm basically just setting it up so I can just check that last case where I do a horizontal. So here when I place this piece, we're into the debugger now and we can kind of step through and try to figure out where we're going. So I is in the zero direction. J is in the one direction, which means it's going to go to the right and check. Remember the last piece we put was this one right here. And then we go ahead and grab the cell here, which is not finding anything. So that might be our issue. For some reason this is negative one, which it shouldn't be, and this is one. Um, let's just step forward and see if we can find something here. The row and column is zero in Okay, so I think the issue is row and column. For some reason they're zero and one, but they should be set to whatever this down here was, which was like five and two or something. So if I were to go back to check for winner and find out what exactly we're passing into it. Out row and column. Go ahead and refresh this page. So when we click this, it should be printing out. Not that value. Zero and two. So the column is correct, but the row is not correct. This should be row zero, one, two, three, four, five. So I must be adding the incorrect data to row here. Um, that is added somewhere up here, I believe, when we create the data of row, set to row, data of column is set to column. Oh, I know why, because I'm I'm passing in the one that I clicked instead of the last empty one. Right, so what I need to do instead is I need to pass in here the last empty cell dot data of row and I need the last empty cell of data of column. Just go ahead and save that. Get rid of the debugger because that might just have fixed the issue there. Cool, so now horizontals seem to be working fine. And the last thing we need to do is check the diagonals. So there's going to be two functions we need to do for the diagonals. There is a bottom left, the top right. So I'll say check diagonal, bottom left to top right. And then here we can just return check when. And if we know the directions, we can say I we need to go down. And then J, we need to go negative, so to the left. 
So that would be from the point that we clicked, go down and to the left, and then also go positive up into the right. Then of course we need to use that. They check diagonals here. And we could add that last method, which is going to be called check diagonal of top left to bottom right. And the difference is this is going to go up to the right, or sorry, down to the right, and then up left. And of course, I'll just call it down here. So now when I save this, we should be able to check if diagonals are working. So let's go ahead and make Play a red win. And it works in the top right diagonal. And let's try it again with the other diagonal. And it's working there as well. In fact, I don't think I checked it with black. So let me just make black win. Cool, so that's working as well. All right, so now we have the functionality to check who won by checking the horizontals, the verticals, and the diagonals that are from top left to bottom right, and from bottom left to top right. And we ran into a little bit of issues debugging because I named some stuff wrong, but luckily we got to see how to debug stuff in the debugger. Um, and I think now at this point what we want to do is we're, we're seeing some issues, so even though the game is over, we can still place crap down. Um, so what we want to do now is that we can say, add a new member called is game over, set equal to false when the game starts. And then what we can do is down here, when we have won, we can say this dot, or sorry, that dot is game over is equal to true. And then whenever this is true, we could just return out of stuff. So if the game is already over, we don't want to be able to click on anything. If the game is over, we don't want to be able to do any of this mouse enter stuff. So let's see if I were to save this now and then just go ahead and end the game. Notice that I can no longer place and when I hover over stuff, nothing happens. Then one more thing I'm noticing is that the hover for empty is still there. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove every class that has empty. So when the game is set to true, I can just go ahead and say, grab me all the empty cells or columns. So I'll say call empty. I'll say remove class of. All right, so let's try to make their red win. And now I don't have that pointer cursor anymore when I hover over the empty cells. Yeah, so that, I think that basically wraps up the Connect 4. I mean, the last thing I could probably do is I could add a restart method to this class. So I could say restart, and I could say this.createGrid. Um, inside create grid, I could say this is game over is equal to false. This.player is equal to red again. I'm not sure if there's anything else. So inside index HTML, we just go ahead and add a restart button. So I can say button restart. Put that on a new line. All right. So when we click it, inside main.js, we can just say um, whenever we click the restart button, just call connect for dot restart. course, I'll add an ID called restart to this. So if I were to place a bunch of stuff down and then restart. Oh, so now it's placed in two grids. I forgot to, um, what we need to do is just empty out the container that we have. So on connect four, if I were to say great grid, I could just say board dot empty. And that's going to go ahead and remove all the HTML elements from the board when we restart. Right, so that's pretty cool. 
is still working. Um, I think, okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is I want to be able to display instead of hello world, like when it's your turn, like it's player red's turn or whatever. So if I go back to index.html and inside here, if I say it's do a span ID of player, I'll just start off with like red or something, or I can keep it blank. Actually, no, I will keep it with red. So I'll say it's players or it's red's turn. So when I save this, it says it's red's turn. Is red's turn. Okay, so now we click, we need to switch it to whatever the player was. So here, what we could do is just add like a callback listener. So I could say connect four on player move. Set it equal to some function. Then I could say set the player text equal to connect four dot player. And of course, we don't actually have an on player move called anywhere in connect four. So if I were to go here inside the constructor and say create a new function called on player move, and then whenever I click and place something inside the cell, I could just say that dot on player move and call it. So now when I click, notice that it is rotating. In fact, it's off by one, it's saying the wrong thing. So instead I'm gonna do it there after we change the player. So right now it says it's red's turn, click it. It says it's black's turn. I can keep alternating between the different players. Then I can restart. So that's an issue when I restart, it's not actually changing the the player up here. So what we could do is again just call that whenever we create the grid. Or whenever we restart. So create the grid, let's say this dot or that dot on player move. So let's see what happens if we do this. Cool. So I'll go ahead and commit this stuff. So I'll say final stages of allowing alternate players to check if someone has won. Go ahead and push that to the repo. Yeah, so I don't know if that was, maybe that was too quick. Hopefully that was well explained or if it wasn't too confusing, but I'll do a really quick recap one more time. Um, basically, we create an HTML file, which has its H4, so we can display its red's turn or black's turn. And we're changing that every time we click or place a piece. We have this connect4 div, which basically our connect4 class is going to render stuff into. And then of course we have a restart button, which basically will just restart the state of our game. And then inside connect four, when the grid is created, we create the grid and we set up some event listeners. And then on every time we click on a cell or a column, we're going to just do different things. So like if it is player red's turn, we're going to place a red token. Or if it's player black's turn, we place a black token. And then same thing when we hover over different columns, we again just change the hover state. Um, every time we click, after we click, we check to see if someone has won or the last per last player who went to see if they won. If they have, we just display an alert and say the game's over. And then we switch players from black to red here. Um, we trigger mouse enter just because that fixes a bug with the hover state. Um, yeah, so Again, feel free to leave me feedback. Let me know if this tutorial was way too fast or fast paced. I should have slowed it down in the future. Um, I didn't want this thing to take too long to do, but I think right now we're pushing around an hour. And again, feel free to grab the project from my repo. So JS hyphen connect hyphen four. And again, I'll put this on YouTube so you can easily just grab it and use it. Or I'll put a link in the YouTube description so you can play around with it. Um, 
yeah, hopefully the tutorial was useful. Uh, feel free to subscribe and look forward to new videos in the future. All right, thanks for watching.